So you guys will have have a recording of it um, as we walk through it. So in case you miss a detail, don't worry about that. You know, writing everything <coughs> down. I'll go ahead and um, um, get that on. So so what we're going to do first of all is go ahead and just put this into our our standard form. We did it for the first constraint already. So I need to take uh, these two right here. So I'm going to have my x1, x2, uh, minus 5, minus x3 equals 0. And then I'm also going to have 20 minus x1 squared minus x2 squared, okay, minus x4. That's going to be another slack variable, okay. And then I'm going to have x3 greater than or equal to 0 and x4 greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so now I've ha I have this into a standard form here where it's minimized uh, and it's just going to be the same objective function. Okay, and then subject to, and I'm gonna, these are going to be my equality constraints right here. And so that's going to be x, x1, x2 minus 5 minus x3 equals 0 and 20 minus x1 squared minus x2 squared minus x4 equals 0 and then I have x3 greater than or equal to 0 and x4 greater than or equal to 0. Now what do we do with, we don't have x1 and x2 greater than or equal to 0, what do we do with that? Okay, so let's set it up as if they're there and then we'll just cross them out. Okay, I found that to be the easiest thing um, to do. Okay, so we're going to set that up as if they are there and then cross them out later. We're, okay, so now we're going to go ahead and set up the barrier problem. So what do we need for the barrier problem in order to be able to solve it? What are the individual elements that we need with this? C of x. Okay, so we need C of x. Let's just go ahead and start with that one. C of x, okay. And uh, actually, let's back up one step. What are our initial guess values for this problem? Okay, guess all zeros. Okay, that's a that's a great strategy. Uh, what would, would it be a feasible problem if we guessed all zeros right from the start? Okay, so wouldn't we wouldn't be starting from a feasible point? Is that going to be a, a problem for the interior point solver to guess all zeros with this standard form right here? Okay, so I have a standard form. If I did plug in all zeros, so so these are not um, at their constraints, that's okay. We can start with those not at their constraints. Um, would these be at their, uh, within their bounds? Yes, it would. So we could start with all zeros. Okay, so um, I, I didn't start with all zeros, um, but um, let's just say we did. Okay, let's just try that. Um, okay, so we're going to start with all of our x's at zeros. Okay, so x1, x2, x3, and x4, all zeros. And then how many um, lambdas are we going to have as well? Two. Okay, so we're going to have two, and we're going to have a lambda one and a lambda two associated with these two, um, these two equality constraints. And then we're also going to have a z3 and a z4 associated with these two inequality constraints. Okay, so z1 and z2, we're going to assume that those are there, just like we assume that x1 greater than 0 and x2 greater than 0 are there as well. Okay, so what do you guys want to guess for lambda 1 and lambda 2? Okay, let's just guess 0. Good. Okay. What does the lambda 1 mean if we, if we guess the lambda 1? Which one's that? Yeah, so you'd say um, you have to have at your uh, final condition, the KKT condition, Remember, that is uh, the gradient of f plus a lambda times a gradient of c has to, equal, uh, has to equal 0. And so what you're saying by 0 here is that, uh, is that this one is not, not satisfied right now. Okay, so that's okay to make that assumption. Uh, we can actually choose anything we want for lambdas. Okay, and then for z's, what do you want to choose for z values? Okay, um, yeah, you might have to choose, you know, to get a good initial guess. What do you guys want to use for a mu value here? 
Yeah, so, so Brand Brandon, right? Braden. Bra Braden uh, said, yeah, that's going to be a problem, especially if we initialize our value of mu over x. So Z3, you know, we'd want to initialize that as mu over x3, you know, if you wanted to have it be at the solution for that equation. But we can choose whatever we want for z as well. Okay, so let's just choose z equals 0. Okay. Yeah, we might have a matrix of zeros there. I don't know. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, let, let's go ahead and just start um, deriving this. Now we need C, right? We need C of X. Okay. And uh, what is that going to be for, for this if I had zeros in there? Okay. So the first one, um, C1 is going to be equal to what? Okay, yeah. So I just take this thing right here, and that equals C one of x and then I take this and that equals c2 of x okay and so uh, c1 of x is just going to be negative 5 okay and then what is c2 of x is it minus 20 or 20 okay so 20 uh, 24 c2 okay now we also need the gradient of c okay so how do we get that uh, the gradient of C with respect to X. Okay, so just go ahead and take the derivatives with respect to X1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so um, that is going to equal... Okay, so gradient uh, with respect... I, I, I wish my... Here, let me zoom out just a little bit here so we can see it. Um, Yeah, two by four. Okay, or a four by two, whichever way you want to write it. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to write this out. Uh, X two, and then I'm I'm going to have. Uh, let's see. So then X one, and then negative one and zero, and then this one's going to be negative two X one, negative two X two, zero and negative one. Okay, so if I plug in the values for those, um, that's just going to be 3, 2, negative 1, 0. And then, oh, sorry, I, I used my initial guess values here um, versus zeros. Okay, so we have 0, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, negative 1. Okay, so those are with our zero values. Okay, now we also need the second derivative of the C matrix with respect to um, each of our variables. Okay, so, um, and in particular, we're going to need um, that from, from this right here. Okay, so the W is actually going to be the second um, gradient with respect of the objective function with respect to X, and then plus lambda 1 times the second gradient of C1 of X plus lambda 2 second gradient with respect to C2 of X. Okay, so actually we have to have two second derivative matrices. You have to have a, a second derivative matrix for each equation, equality equation that you have. Okay, so um, Let's go ahead and derive those too. Okay, so I'm going to do the first one. Okay, so this is C with this is our first equation. Okay, so I'm going to go down this list right here. I'm going to do each of these with respect to each other variable. So this with respect to x1 is 0, and I have 1, and then 0, 0, and then this one with respect to x1 is 1. 0, 0, 0, and this one is zeros all the rest of the way. Okay? So I just took this one right here and took the derivative. This element right here is dc1 dx1 dx1, and this one, for example, is dc1 dx1 dx2. Okay, so I just did that for all of my my values. Now, now you can get um, this matrix right here if 
if you don't have automatic differentiation to get you these derivatives or the second derivative matrix, you can use the BFGS update or those other approximation methods to get that um, as you iterate forward. Okay, so you don't have to get those analytically if you don't want. You can still use a BFGS update if you don't have second derivatives available to you. Okay, um, let's do it for the next one as well. Uh, C2. Okay, so I'm going to just take this one and, and go down my uh, list. Zero. Okay, there I have it. Uh, a second derivative matrix. Um, now this is the same thing that we had before, but you just change those to C2. Use it for the second equation instead of for the first equation. Okay, is this making sense? I need to slow down on these, or are you guys okay? Who needs me to slow down a little bit? Slow down just a little bit? Okay, so um, I'll, uh, let me go back and just rephrase this, and you need the, the constraint values at your initial guess values, okay? And then you take the derivative of these constraint values, C1 and C2, with respect to each of your variables. Okay, so this is C1, and then this is C2, with respect to X1, X2, X3, and X4, and then C2 with respect to X1, X2, X3, and X4. Okay, so we just need to get the equation, uh, you know, evaluate the equations. Um, get their first derivatives and then also second derivatives. Now, when you nor are normally solving optimization problems with the interior point method, you'll be using something like MATLAB or a modeling language and it will give you all of these gradients to you for, basically it'll generate all these for you. So we're doing it right now just to be able to see them, but normally you'd have a modeling language or an optimization package that would give those to you for free. All you have to do is write your equations. Okay. So I'm showing you a little bit of the painful details here just to show you what goes into a uh, search direction. Okay, and then these are second derivative matrices. Um, so you differentiate that equation twice with respect to each of your variables to come up with your, your two um, e matrices there. Okay, so now let's go on to the objective function. We need... Um, okay, so do we need f of x? Okay, we don't need that, um, but um, let's just go ahead and calculate it anyway. Um, we'll need that for our search uh, to make sure that we are have a sufficient decrease in our objective function. If you had zeros there for x1 and x2, your objective is zero. Okay, good. So that is going to equal zero, and then your gradient of f. So go ahead and work on this for um, a minute. Just write your gradient with respect to f, okay? Sorry, it's gradient of f with respect to x. Sorry, thank you. Okay, so um, do you get something like that? X2, X1, then 0, 0. Okay, so we just differentiated this with respect to X1, 2, 3, and 4. What's that? Oh, thank you. Okay, 5 plus. Okay, there you go. Good. 
good catch on that one. So that's going to give us 0, 5, 0, 0. Okay, and then we the final thing is the second derivative of f with respect to x. Okay, so go ahead and work on that now. Um, and I'll work on it too. If you need help, just check up here as you're going. Okay, go ahead and look up when you guys are done with this one. And uh, okay, so um, this one, just two one elements there. Now we're ready to do our W matrix, okay, which is the uh, this right here that we will combine. What's the nice thing about how we chose our lambdas? Those are going to be zero, okay. So actually our W matrix is just going to be equal to the second derivative of our objective function. We didn't e actually even need to calculate the second derivatives with respect to the, uh, of the constraints with respect to X. Um, okay, so we have that. And now all you have to do is just put everything into this, this big matrix here and then invert that matrix. Okay, so it's a little bit of bookkeeping there to just say, hey, here's where my W goes. Uh, here's where my, my first derivative of my constraints go right there. This is negative I, okay, um, uh, identity matrix. Um, this is just a diagonal of Z values. Okay, so you just have to plug that in and, and invert. What's that? What were the Z values again? Okay, yeah, the Z values, um, that is just the capital Z is just going to be Z1, Z2, Z3, and Z4, zeros elsewhere, okay? So just a diagonal matrix and also the capital X equals X1, X2, X3, X4, and then zeros elsewhere in that matrix, okay? And um, let's see, there's one other thing. I think the E um, right here, that's just a column vector of ones. It just makes it so you can do an n by n, by an n by n, by an n by one, and come up with an n by one here. OK, any yeah, question? Yeah, so is there a Z1 and Z2 problem? Yeah, so no Z1 and Z2. Okay, so what do we do about that? Okay, so I'm just going to write out the big matrices now, and then we'll just cross out those uh, rows and columns because those constraints don't exist. Okay, so I'm just going to take and do a big matrix. This is going to be a 4 by 4 right here. That's just going to be our F. Um, the Hessian of our objective function. Okay, and then we had our, okay, this one right here, I need to put here. Okay. Yeah. So why didn't we just say instead of D3 and D4, we just said there was Z1, Z2? Um, you could, yeah. That's a good question. That's a good, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you could do that. You could do that. I've so you the same result. Same result. Yeah. Okay. So actually let me just show you the MATLAB now. Um, the as it converges with some contour plots, as it converges toward the solution for this um, for this problem. Okay, so I'm gonna go to um, so I think I put this on my there it is. 
Okay, so I'm going to open up MATLAB. Now this is problem number four on that uh, BPOP solver that I sent you. And then we'll see how, I started with the guess of, I think, three, two uh, for mine. My uh, mu value is 10. Okay, so let's see how it converges toward the solution now. Okay, so here's the problem. It's going toward the middle of that barrier function. The optimal solution is actually going to be down in the bottom right hand corner. And so you can see as we lower that mu value, it goes back to something that looks like the original objective function. Okay, so along the way it actually, um, let me get back to that contour plot. Okay, so it kind of started, you know, right in this region, right? That was kind of the middle and it kind of migrated to that region as you reduce the mu value then it started tracking down to where the optimal solution was. Okay, so what is this constraint? Which one is this one right here? Which one do you guys think that one is of the two that you have there? Okay, so that's going to be the C2 one that you have x1 squared plus x2 squared is less than 20. Okay, so if you uh, took a value here. Um, you know, this is uh, about one and well, one and five would be right here. So is this? I think it's this one right here is the less than twenty one. Okay, this is actually the other one. X one times X two. Um, is that greater than five, or do I have them backwards? Less than twenty. Yeah, one, okay, yeah, th so, so this one is the, uh, the x1 times x2 is greater than or equal to 5, and then this one right here is going to be the x1 squared plus x2 squared less than 20. Okay, so the solution has to be somewhere in this region right here. So let me um, also show you a plot of how it progressed. Okay, so you have a... Uh, a plot here of the x1 and x2 values. Okay, so it, it started, uh, it, it converged to the solution there. You can see the number of iterations, 13 iterations. It leveled out at the, uh, the solution, satisfied the KKT conditions. And then here's the value of mu as we progressed. Okay, so you can see the mu value um, dropping, and this is a log 10 of mu. So it got very small at the solution. Okay, so any questions on this, Joe? So I just, uh, I thought the interior point method implied that your initial point was interior of your constraints. Yeah, so interior to your constraints, so. But it's not a requirement. So why could we start with zero, zero then on this one? Why is it that we could start with, uh, zero zero and not have a uh, so can we start with zero zero okay <laughs> so what do you guys think can you start with zero zero so why is that okay mu is high in the beginning but it looks like we're outside of that region that you saw that kind of looked like a, a fish or something you know like, okay so it's because we formulate it with slack variables. And those slack variables are the only ones that have any quality constraints on them, not our original equations. So we're okay starting from zero, zero, as long as we guess slack variables that are greater than zero. Okay. So that just forces our slack variables to put us in that fish region? Um, it'll converge to that region. Okay. But we're only taking a two-dimensional slice of a four-dimensional region. Um, does, that, does that make sense on the contours? So we're, we're not looking at the full depth there. We're just taking a slice of it and projecting it onto two dimensions. Jacob? But then we also set slack variables to Yeah, that one would be right on the border. We'd probably want to move those off from the, the border um, so that you don't have an ill-conditioned matrix when you invert it. Okay. Okay, so um, 
I'm gonna go ahead and just stop this. If you guys, if you miss.